Victoria will be in deciding who wins the election. Even safe Liberal seats are under siege. Tamara O'Dyne is in the electorate of Higgins that's being eyed off by Labor and the Greens. Mary, it's Paran Assumption footy clubs training night here at Turak Park behind me. You might even be able to hear them. And so could the people living in the new apartments next to the grounds. Those homes are an example of the changing demographic of this bluest of blue ribbon seats. Higgins has only ever been held by a Liberal, including two Prime Ministers and a Treasurer. And we're here tonight to get a sense of how the mood is changing. Higgins stretches from South Yarra on the city's edge, through the trendy shopping strips of Paran, and out to genteel suburbs like Turak, Malvern, Armadale, through to Glen Iris and the retail behemoth of Chadston. Higgins is home to postcode 3142, the second wealthiest in the country after Palm Beach in Sydney. Around here, the average taxable income is about $200,000 a year and you can see it in the houses. In fact, house prices in Higgins are the sixth highest in the country. Nearly half of the adults who live here have a tertiary education. And more people describe themselves as professional than any other job category. But in the past 10 or 15 years, there's been a big shift in the demographics. This corporate set, CBD workers, young hipster creatives, spilling across from Fitzroy and Collingwood into apartments in South Yarra and it does change the demography of the community. We're finding now with the growing population that um, that density is now starting to creep out to the more leafier suburbs. In the 10 years since 2006, separate houses like this have decreased by 16%. Meantime, medium density dwellings have gone up by about the same amount. The real change has been here, with high-density apartments going up a whopping 50%. Put simply, the population is getting younger, is less wealthy and is more likely to rent. And there's another shift in numbers too at the polling booths. Since the 2016 federal election, 21,000 people have moved into the electorate and a similar number have left. That means one in five voters here is new to Higgins, and that's one of the highest turnover rates in the country. It's not just the introduction of new 20-somethings. We can sort of see that. It's the shift in the way the core or the base thinks that I think is the most interesting. This has traditionally been a conservative seat, but in 2017, in the same-sex marriage plebiscite, Higgins had the seventh highest yes vote in the country at 78%. Higgins voters are also more tuned into environmental issues. Even just our use of paper in distributing council information is something that we, we have to be cognisant of because people don't want that anymore. They want to see us be a leader in environmental sustainability and change. There is certainly a shift in people's views and the future and the future that we're going to leave for our children. When outgoing member for Higgins, Kelly O'Dwyer, criticised her party's direction after the hard right coup against Malcolm Turnbull, she highlighted the Liberals' image problem in socially progressive Victoria. The new Liberal candidate, paediatrician Katie Allen, is up against Labor's high-profile human rights lawyer Fiona McLeod and the Greens' Jason Ball, a former AFL player and anti-homophobia campaigner. So, are the Liberals really under threat in their traditional stronghold? Richard Willingham reports. David Abel and his kids are enjoying family night at the local bowls club in the heart of Higgins. Oh, a little bit too much mustard, but the accuracy was beautiful. <laughs> David right. has always voted Liberal. Am I going to vote that again? I don't know. <laughs> He's not the only one wavering. Dennis Hewitt has lived in Higgins for 40 years. Yeah. Do you think it'll stay Liberal at this election? No. Do you think it'll be a change? Yeah. I do. It sounds like you're willing to change teams. Very likely. It's all the infighting. You know, get out and govern. It's a recurring theme. We don't like seeing Prime Ministers coming and going the way they have done. How many have we had in seven years? Five? Plus? That's... I've never seen anything like it. The Coalition has a major policy problem as well. 
A nationwide Roy Morgan poll showed Higgins had the highest number of voters expressing concern about climate change. There is some evidence that it's women in particular who have been put off by the more hairy-chested conservatism of the contemporary Liberal Party, but I think it's a phenomenon that spread more widely in those inner urban, leafy suburb electorates. At November's state election, shortly after Malcolm Turnbull was dumped, the Liberals were hammered by voters in those inner eastern suburbs. In the Malvern electorate, within Higgins, the swing was 10%. Maybe some of those voters got that disappointment off their chests, um, or is it now baked in? Labor has problems too. Higgins is home to plenty of retirees who are concerned about its changes to franking credits. If you've saved your money so that you have a little bit so you don't go on a pension and you don't like to think the government's going to take that too. Oh, wow, OK. But Labor and its candidate, high-profile barrister Fiona McLeod, may not even be the biggest threat to new Liberal candidate Katie Allen. At the last federal election, the Greens candidate, Jason Ball, managed to top Labor's primary vote. If the Liberal vote does tank and falls well below 50%, then the door is open. Then it's a race between Labor and the Greens into second, with preferences to decide whether the Liberals' decades-long stranglehold here will be broken. Richard Willingham, ABC News, Melbourne. Earlier today, ABC Melbourne Radio's Mornings host, John Fain, took the temperature on the streets of Higgins. Here's what voters are saying. In broadcasting today from the electorate of Higgins, it's a genuine three-way contest. I'm going to be voting for the candidate this time who answers a federal issue, who will ensure that all of the victims of the banks and the financial services misbehaviour will be compensated. And I can't believe that the modern Liberal Party, as they call themselves this morning, would get a survey out to people that doesn't put climate change in the top 10 issues. I think that's really pathetic. Text messages, has anyone talked about Fraser Anning? No, they haven't, and thank goodness for that, I say. <laughs> Bill Shorten said that if he comes to power, in the first three years, he'll hold a vote for Australia to, be, to become a republic. And I don't know whether that is true or not, but if he does, I'll vote Labor. I've never voted Labor in my life. I think people are starting to wake up that if you're in a safe seat, you're going to be ignored and you probably get a bit more attention if you do vote for an independent. And Insiders host Barry Cassidy is with me now. So, Barry, let's look at this in terms of the wider context in Victoria. Do you think voters are still seeing red over the ousting of Malcolm Turnbull like they did with the state election? Or is this more going to be run on policies, do you think? Uh, what we do know is that when it happened back in August last year, it was toxic. And it was particularly toxic in Victoria, I think, because it's a progressive state. And I think Malcolm Turnbull was probably more popular here uh, than he was anywhere else. And then, of course, November, we got evidence of that. Um, the Liberals performed very poorly at the state election and they got some shocking numbers in some suburbs that sit inside uh, the electorate of Higgins. Mm. Uh, so whether with more water under the bridge, it's as toxic as, as it was, that's, that's hard to judge. So could Labor or the Greens actually be in with a chance to snatch Higgins from the Liberals? If the Liberals lose Higgins, that's the doomsday scenario for, for the Liberal Party. This is the seat of Holt and Gorton and Costello. It's, it's sitting on 7.5%. And even if the polls were, hold up, the, the, were to hold up, the swing to the Labor Party would be around 25 mm. However, why are the Greens and why are the Labor Party spending more resources and more money this time around? For the reasons we've already talked about, Climate change is a big issue, as Richard has already referred to. In fact, this electorate, um, this electorate of Higgins, uh, there's more concern about climate change in this electorate than any other electorate in Victoria. And of course, you've got a popular sitting member retiring. So for all those reasons, we'll be keeping a much closer eye on Higgins on May 18 than any other election. Barry Cassidy, thank you. Thank you. Well, Mary, that's it from Higgins. In a couple of weeks, I'll be heading out to the mortgage belt seat of La Trobe to find out what policies are cutting through with voters there. Thanks, Tam. Tamara Dine with that in-depth look at Higgins.